Hello, it's Rupi from The Doctor's Kitchen and today we're going to be talking about fats. What's really important is to get a clear understanding of what fats are, their chemical structure and how that has different effects in our body. Fats are called lots of different things, sats or unsats, fatty acids, trigs. Basically, fats are three fatty acid chains connected to a central group. There are four types we need to be aware of. Saturated, unsaturated, which are divided into mono and polyunsaturated, and trans fats. Saturated fats, butter, cheese, coconut oil, they're usually found in animal products. The fatty acid chains have got zero double bonds and that affects its chemical structure and how it interacts with our body. What's important to distinguish right at the start of this tutorial is that when something is referred to as a saturated fat, it's called a saturated fat because it's largely made up of saturated fatty acids. Uh, let me give you an example. Coconut oil is referred to as a saturated fat and that's because those triglycerides that make up coconut oil are largely made up of saturated fatty acids, it's about 90%, whereas the other 10% are unsaturated. Butter, for example, is 60% saturated fat, whereas the other proportion of butter is largely unsaturated fat. So when something is referred to as, this is a saturated fat, this is an unsaturated fat, that's kind of blurring it a bit. It's usually a, a multitude of fats that make up that particular ingredient or product. Going beyond just the classification of whether something is saturated versus unsaturated, we can also look at the lengths of those three fatty acid chains that make up a particular fat. And these can be broadly short, medium and long. So coconut oil is referred to as a medium chain fatty acid because it's largely made up of saturated fats, that are medium chain in length. The reason why you might find medium chain triglycerides as beneficial is because it crosses the blood brain barrier. That's the barrier between our brain and our bloodstream. As it's a smaller fatty acid, it can be more readily used as a fuel source and it's very important for people who have malabsorption as well. The longer saturated fatty acid chains require some sort of modification and absorption via a different pathway. The differing proportions of saturated fatty acids and the types and the lengths can have varying effects in the body. With this information, I hope you can appreciate that when you see a headline or you hear something in the news about saturated fat being you know, bad for heart conditions or sat fat gives you cancer, it completely negates the different types of saturated fats there are and the sources of where we get those fats from. So what do we need saturated fats for? Hormone production, vitamin simulation, proper functioning of our immune system. Over the last few decades, we've been taught that saturated fat is something to be avoided, but actually looking at newer studies, saturated fat has been shown to be cardio neutral, if not cardio protective. It's likely that the quality of the fats in our diet are something that we need to pay more attention to rather than the category of saturated fats in itself. Unsaturated fats are those with either one double bond between the carbon atoms, also called a monounsaturated fat, or multiple double bonds within the carbon atoms, and these are called polyunsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fatty acids, or MUFAs, as I'm probably gonna to refer to now, because it's quite a lot to say, include uh, extra virgin olive oil, olives, obviously, nuts and avocados. Again, we call them MUFAs, because they are largely made up of these monounsaturated fatty acids. It's always been widely accepted that MUFAs have got positive effects on the body, they're better for your cardiovascular system, and they can have antioxidant roles as well because they contain a lot of vitamin E and other antioxidants. However, the quality of your MUFAs can vary widely. The process by which some monounsaturated fatty acid oils are extracted can be quite harmful, even though the profile is quite high in these monounsaturated fatty acids. This is getting quite tiresome to say. As a general rule of thumb, I stick with 100% extra virgin olive oil that's organic and cold pressed to cook at low cooking temperatures. Always store it in a dark green bottle because the light can actually degrade the oil. And I tend to use it up within a few weeks because again, contact with oxygen can uh, make the oil rancid. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are those with multiple double bonds in between the carbon atoms. Like essential minerals and vitamins, there are essential fatty acids. 
and these two essential fatty acids are omega-3 and omega-6 that you've probably heard of. The reason why they're essential is because the body cannot make it itself, therefore we need to assimilate it from our diet, in our food, to make other fatty acids from them. Omega-3 can also be referred to as ALA or alpha-linoleic acid, and omega-6 is also known as linoleic acid, but there are different names for it according to the lengths of the fatty acid chains, including arachidonic acid, gamma-linoleic, omega-3 is also known as EPA and DHA, so it can be quite confusing, but the broad two types are omega-3 and omega-6. These are really important in the body because they make a whole host of other things in the body, including eicosanoids that are involved in inflammation, endocannabinoids that are involved in mood and stress. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as eating lots of omega-3 and lots of omega-6. What we've seen from studies is that it's the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 that's really important. So ideally, you want to be eating a ratio of anything between one to one, and one to four. Ratios higher than one to four have been shown to be pro-inflammatory because omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. That doesn't necessarily mean omega-6 is bad, it's just that it's needed in those sorts of quantities. Sources of these essential fatty acids that are high in omega-3 and lower in omega-6 include things like walnuts, sunflower seeds, flax oil, and oily fish, oily fish being probably one of the best sources. These include things like sardines, mackerel, even salmon. If you're eating meat or dairy, it's really important to make sure it's grass-fed and organic, as these have more favorable omega-3 to omega-6 ratios. What's really important if you're plant-based and you're getting your omega-3s from things like flax, are that your omega-6 is very low because that can affect the absorption and the assimilation of omega-3 sources. Foods that are high in omega-6 include sunflower oil, margarines and hydrogenated products, and deep frying and processed food. Trans fats are the last type of fat and they're universally agreed on to be bad for your health. They are pro-inflammatory and they definitely cause cardiovascular disease. We should be removing them from our food sources. However, there is some legislation that allows for trans fats to be labeled as zero in the product, yet still contain up to half a gram per serving, and the serving can be varying amounts. As a general rule of thumb, I get my fats from nuts, seeds, avocados, coconut oils, and extra virgin olive oil for dressings. I do use oils for cooking, but I'm quite wary of hitting a smoke point that can turn the oil rancid. So I hope that gives you a general overview of fats. It can be quite complicated, but what I want you to take home is appreciate the fact that no fats are the same. There are four different types of fats. All fats are necessary parts of our human diet. So a low fat diet is likely not going to be good for you. There are lots of different diets out there, very low carbohydrate diet, ketogenic diet, 5-2 diet, cert diet, etc. It can be very, very confusing, but I hope you can appreciate that it's more about the quality of fats that you put into your diet rather than the type of fat you put into your diet. Apart from the trans fats, I've also done some other tutorials on micronutrients and antioxidants. You can click somewhere up here. I really hope you like watching the video. Share it, subscribe, like, and if you have any other questions or topics that you'd like me to talk about, shoot me an email and I'll probably talk about it. Doctor's Kitchen.